Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Ben and together with MP, this boat has been rebuilt over the last three years with an amazing team on our side. We have been counting down to launch for a long time, but it is getting serious right now as these two boats, you can see behind me, are now almost painted and I'm gonna head into the water, which means we are gonna be next. You have seen a lot of changes over the last few episodes, including the last episode, we added some color to the boat by bringing up a brand newly painted boom. You might have seen that there are only a few more things left to do before we can launch this boat so stay tuned to find out what they are and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video if you want to stay up to date with the latest videos and also I promised I would sleep up in the mask when we reach 100,000 and I'd rather do that on the dry than on the water with everything wobbling so get clicking and most of all enjoy the video. Today we're gonna install this stay but we need to cut it a little bit more I think. This goes into here and this splits the cables apart. We've never done this. We've watched Gedges do it a few times. Uh, we need to remove this, I think, as well. You see how the wire goes in the middle of it? And that's what we're gonna have to copy with that inside wire over there. Now we've got this and so far I think we haven't messed up. I know that the length that have to, has to stick out of the tip here has to be the same length as the amount it's gonna fold outwards like a flower on this little plate here, giving enough space for the outer ones to also fold over it while tightening. That will make sense at some point. Serve it off slowly. So that little piece of tape we put on was just so that little hat didn't fall off. It was a pain to get all the wires in. I think now we're just gonna tighten it all. That's what I've been watching on all the YouTube videos. Tighten it all. And once it's all tight and in place, you then loosen it and do all the liquids. I mean, tighten it, that's how easy. <laughs> Before actually using all the liquids and making it permanent, we're just going to test the length because at the end of the day, it's a first time measuring and cutting. Nice. Yeah. I'm very happy with this because also when it ends up in here, this is cone shaped inside and all these outside wires will wrap over and sandwich and all the seeker flex. Seeker, lock tight and then we're done. Okay. Finally, we have every piece of tensioner and every stay and shroud on the entire boat that was stored inside on the boat right now. Both bob stays, all the stays, the shrouds and everything in place. All that's missing now is just one connection, which we're gonna work on now. What I would like to do on the platform is add one of these rings on each of those chain plates and another one on each side down there. I was hoping on the same plate as the support. However, I think we need to see if the chain is gonna be in contact with that support. We'll just figure some stuff out now and see where this is gonna go. Luik and myself have been struggling a lot figuring out where we're gonna put, I'm gonna call it the bob stay of the platform, which is from where Luik is, from that chain plate, down onto a transom or under the hole. Oof, bang. Luckily, we've got some people visiting, which my mum and Alan, my stepdad, and he happens to be very good at calculations as he's, is or was an engineer? Still is I an engineer. Still an, I'm an engineer. I am. I still <laughs> am an engineer. So, <laughs> so this is practically the first engineering we've done on the rebuild of the boat. So 
I'm very happy that something will be right. Will it, Alan? Yes, it'll be right. <laughs> of course it'll be right. That's actually less than we had before. Less? Yeah, we have, when we did it yesterday, we thought it was as much as 20. Uh, oh, so the top one's less. Yeah, yeah, in fact, I'll, but the load is less, so we need to actually check that one. Not only is Alan helping us out a lot with the platform supports, you guys are busy, you're all very busy. My mum is also here and she's really, really good with furniture, painting and sweating. And sweating. <laughs> it is very hot and humid today, but we've got a fan on. So what we're doing is we're just finishing, or my mum is just finishing off this sun wall because it's taking lots of sun, <laughs> ironically. And we want to have varnish on it, so she's going to make it nice and smooth, look very pretty. Uh, sand it and then varnish it. How's that going? Good. For a beginner, good, I hope. The pressure of doing a good job on the sun. Yeah, we'll leave you with this. I'll go and do my work downstairs. Okay. Now. Of course, you know, Nico is the one who never rests, even though we don't show him very often. He's up here on the boat, making sure we have a very nice inner bulwark. He's already put one layer of polyurethane primer over the, uh, one layer of polyurethane paint over the primer. You can see here, it's like kind of messy. Why it's going over now, it's looking stunning. Of course, what we want is to be, for the mount of the stay to be as low down as possible onto the transom to open the angle. For that, we're going to figure out where the rudder turns to. So we're going to put the steering wheel on, turn the rudder completely, and then figure out where we can put that ring or plate with a ring on. working here on the 220 volt system so the motor plus is our inverter charger and now it is connected to this that we have the AC in which will be shore power or generator and also the AC out which will be anything that we want to use that is 220 plugs on a plug so what we just did was installing one plug so we can test if this is working before we can continue putting more wires through for other stuff like the uh, the stove the oven the anyway any plugs for computers anything to try this out we have to start from the beginning turn the power on turn the multiples on and then come here turn this on and then test that little plug if it has any power let's test this out time of truth I'm not sure you're understanding this, but we just run 220 with our 24 volt battery bank. That's the power source of this 220. This is a big deal. I'm so happy. Can you see how the circles are leaving from the battery? to the inverter and then out of the AC load. How cool was that?
And tell me, what was wrong with our layout? It's just that we're going to connect all four panels in series. So we want to be positive, yeah. negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. Anyway, they have to be like this, not like this. And is it going to work? You're seeming very positive about this. Or negative. <laughs> We've got our pieces, so these are 5 mil thick stainless steel plates that we're going to fasten the half inch rings onto and that's going to be fastened in the position we chose after much considering with Alan there and there with the possibility to improve it later on by changing angles and stuff but for now we think it's going to be more than enough by having a straight stay going downwards onto uh, uh, the hull above the water line. So we're just going to put all this together while they're all in place and uh, fasten or order the stays or order the stainless steel wire and a tensioner and put them all in place. We have added two of these big rings, one over there, well actually Luik and impeded that one, and we did this one over here, another big ring, we've got two massive tensioners which are actually going to go on the top by the platform for easier access, but in order for me to do so, or for us to hang it there, we've got two more rings that we need to weld onto there and get the stainless wire, then I think this part will be finished, right? All this. Uh, ah, and I also had... Uh, they're busy bending some more metal, like the little U-shaped ones here to put another support somewhere here just to add it, give it a bit more structure because it is quite parallel to the platform. And one more in the middle and then that should be done. First, we just place the solar panels on the roof of our pilot house to see how they will look like. Now that we defined the place, we are ready to start attaching them with those supports which are not important just to fix them so they don't fly away but also to leave some gap between them and the roof so they get fresh air under which helps a lot with how they work and the temperature and all that so that's what we're doing cutting some aluminium supports screwing them under so we can have the solar panels working and attached to the bow so they are finally part of the above
I ended up working into the dark because we wanted the panels to be fixed onto the roof because it should be slightly stormy tonight and we didn't want to start tidying them up again and I think it's a really good time you see when the camera's laggy it's because it's dark and it's trying to lighten up but MP what are we gonna do? We're gonna see nap light at night! Okay put it on hey red is on let's check the white one at the back white one's also on and all our interior light of course lights of course very cool going to the jungle to the green one and can you also turn the underwater lights on we haven't tested the back ones yet at night good thing i came here because look at that this whoa that is super bright that is crazy bright <laughs> that is insane mm, the whole shipyard is lit up i can easily find my way now this is all light from the underwater lights starboard's working yay look how bright it is here i know <laughs> this is so funny this was so cool. See you guys tomorrow when we try and get the rest of the boat finished. This welding is taking a while because I don't want to heat up the stainless too much because there's wood under it. But I noticed what's happening is this crib is now being lifted because the bottom boat has gone into the water. This is now going to be put next to it, well, between our two boats over here. So he can go down. They're going to lift one boat with his crib up to the top. And then this one that's being lifted is going under our boat. And that's what we're going to get launched with. I don't know what feelings I have here, if I'm nervous, if I feel like I need to rush or if I should be happy, I'm not sure. I think I'm happy, relieved and excited, very excited. Now the cool bit comes when they're going to start moving it to the side for now, not under our boat, just here in the middle. And then that's going to be launch day for Preta. Little update while we're having a break from everything. Uh, there's only one more ring to be welded onto the chain plate of the platform, which is quite cool. I ended up taking those chain plates off because welding upside down is a pain and welding on a table is a lot cleaner. That boat, I heard the winch literally just started. Oh, it's officially moving. One thing I wanted to show you very quickly is I can't film while they are here. There we go, anchor chain box is being welded into, well, what do you call it, fiberglass into place. Super crazy thick box. Perfect, anyway, so working on the platform stays and the uh, box down there, the anchor chain box while this boat's being launched and then that is good news because when that's launched I think they're going to lift one boat and then they're going to put the crib under us. Anyway, that's what that anchor chain box looks like for now when it's done I will uh, show you guys what the final product is but this is quite a cool process so let's see how that goes. Today we have reached a peak of 36 degrees Celsius. It's now noon-ish. 
and it's supposed to drop 10 degrees in the next three or four hours. I have no idea how that's gonna happen. Either way, the shipyard is looking so empty over there with Perita now in the water. Next step is to get this crib under our boat and get our boat launched. It was 36 degrees, hot and no wind, and the wind has picked up quite a bit. So I understand why I said it was gonna drop 10 degrees. Because it's gonna storm very hard, so let's hurry up. We've got good news. The boat's on the crib already. We can go to the water. Explain how beautiful you think this is. We've been thinking what name we should give it. I think I know it now. Wait, Scrat. Frankenstein. <laughs> no. It has to be. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. But look at it. Try and break it. You'll never be able to. Oh my god. Sit in it. What's wrong? I don't love it. No, what, uh. what's the word you said? Uh. <laughs> Rino. Upcycling. Yeah. It is what it is. That's enough quebra mais. Did you explain what it is? What is it? It's our old dinghy that was very sad. We couldn't inflate it anymore. We couldn't patch it anymore. We we know them. Filled it with polyurethane foam, the one that expands, so it became the whole shape of the boat again, floatable. Plus a bit more. And then they added fiberglass to make it rigid. So we have an inflatable rigid dinghy. Which is indestructible, indestructible. And ugly. <laughs> oh, <the email. laughs> oh, do you agree it's ugly? Oh, I think it's quite old school. It's not elegant, but it's gonna be the strongest and heaviest thing out there. <laughs> This wouldn't be possible without all of your support, especially Charles, Dennis and Patrick for joining us on Patreon. Welcome to the crew. And also Gregory, you are a legend. And John, Richard, thank you for donating to his PayPal. And Jens, Jamie, Kevin, James, Duane, Dale, Clifford, Stuart, Ian, Skerritt and Greg. Thank you so much for clicking that super thanks button. It means a lot to us and see you guys next week. I hope you enjoyed the video.